Okay guys, to finish up this unit we're going to take a look at two games. Uh, this first one we're going to do involves chasing a baby and if we hit it we get points. We're also going to be able to shoot a flame and then the third one will be to use the mouse to move around. Now when you start the game uh, there's a baby that appears in random locations and you move around with your keys and you try to get it. Okay. Also you can, when you chase the baby, shoot a flame if you can see it or find it somewhere, it'll reappear in a second. And uh, the third technique is to, and it would be a little bit too easy in this game, is to actually move the baby around with your mouse. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the ways to code this. Okay, so first thing, a uh, little bit of review. When we go into the underground of the code, Alright, so first of all remember that if we're using double buffering, we're going to have to add that line. There was also some sound effects, so we add that into the game. Remember, this is how you do double buffering, and it goes in between this section here, the public section. You decide when you make your game all the different components that you want to load, pictures, backgrounds, explosion effects, whatever. I've also got two sounds that I'm going to use. And now, this is the baby that I'm using to move around the screen. So you have to keep track of its X and Y position. Okay? Uh, the baby that I'm chasing cycles through images. Okay, there's 14 images. And uh, that's what that array is for. I took the lazy way out here. I, I also have the thing that I'm chasing be this, the baby also. What I would recommend for your game is to have this be a, a different set of images. You notice when I played the game that there was a flame, all right? So I'm going to have to keep track of where the flame is. And this thing right here is how fast the flame is moving. So it could go up by fives, tens, or whatever. We had a countdown timer in the game. We're using random numbers, of course. This is brand new. I don't want that baby that I'm chasing to stay on the screen the whole time. It might stay there for three seconds, and then next time five seconds, and the next time two seconds. Okay, so I want that to be random. So I'm going to have to keep track of the current time. And this frame time is how long I want it on the screen. This is the technique that I showed you guys the day before. This is how we're always going to do it. The paint event refreshes the screen, but it only happens the very first time you run the program. After that, you have to refresh the paint yourself, so you have to use this thing called invalidate. Anyway, this calls the draw stuff routine. I'll show you this last. What I want to do now is sneak down here and take a look at the form load. This centers the baby in the sort of the middle of the screen. The baby I'm chasing initially is off screen. Okay? And this is kind of a trick. The flame that I'm shooting is also off screen. You don't see it and it's change, which means how fast it's gonna move is initially set to zero. Those are how we load in the pictures obviously. And these are the sounds and here's this part of the new stuff. When you start the game, I want to have a random number which represents how long the baby I'm chasing is going to stay on the screen. Okay? And I also keep track of the time at that exact moment. Then what I do as I start playing my game is I keep saying, hey, what time is it now? And I compare what time it is now to what time it was last time. And if the difference between those two is equal to this number, then it's been on there long enough. The baby that I'm chasing has been there long enough, and now I'm going to erase it and put it in a new spot. Button start, pretty basic. You turn on all your timers, okay? Stop game, you turn all your timers off. This other stuff you've seen before, I've got that baby that's cycling through images, so you do that. That's something new that refreshes the screen, and so it changes the images. In this particular game, these are the keys I'm going to use to go left, right, up, down, whatever. When I press the 2 button on the number pad, I'm going to shoot a flame. Now here was the trick. The flame, 99% of the time, is off screen. It's not on the screen. So you don't see it. All right. And every time you draw, you actually draw the flame, but it's off screen. The instant you actually need the flame, the person's position will be X. So what you do is you make the flame be a little bit away from the person and a little bit down. And you initialize this variable to a number. So the flame is going to go across the screen 15 pixels at a time. 
if you remember before, initially the flame is at zero pixels. Okay? This timer is your countdown timer. You guys used that before. This part here, as you, the clock ticks, obviously the flame is going to move across and across and across. So initially I set it to 15, so then this will be 30 the next time and 45. So the position will keep updating from where it was. The flame will hit the side of the screen eventually because I'm shooting it only left to right. So when I do hit the wall, I make the flame go away, which means it doesn't change anymore, and I show it off screen. So you, nobody can see negative 100 and 100. Also, every time the timer ticks, i got to see if the baby actually ran into the target. And the first set of if statements is if it ran into the target when I was chasing it using the cursor keys. All right? And I mentioned in class before, and I'll mention it again, this happens so fast that when you hit the baby and you come back to this routine, you might end up getting one point, two points, three points. Like you're on the baby once and you're going to get like 20 points. So what you have to do is initially the flag is false, which means the baby has never been hit. And you go at the very end of the if statement and go, listen, I hit the baby and if I've never hit the baby before, give myself a point and then set the hit to true. Because if the timer comes back here so fast that I didn't have a chance to switch the screen to a different location, then this line is going to not be true. So I won't give myself another point because now the timer variable hit is equal to true. So I will not give myself another point. This is how you figure out if you hit the baby with the flame. Okay, and you always invalidate, which means to refresh the screen and redraw. Okay, we're almost in the home stretch. Uh, there's the new game stuff. This game also can use the mouse, all right? And the mouse is pretty basic. You use mouse move, and this E tells you where your mouse is at any moment, and it's fed into the X and Y. You'll see where those X's and Y's come in in a second. You can also fire with the mouse if you want, and it's basically the same as the one I showed you a few minutes ago. Okay, let's go up to the very top, and now let's focus in on the last part. This is the part that gets done a ton of times also. You're drawing stuff, right? So when you draw stuff, you're always going to need to, every single time, redraw and type in the words you're going to use in your game, okay? So this initializes the fonts and everything else. And then what happens is I remember what time it is. Right at the beginning in the form load, I said, here's the time right now. But obviously the time has changed since I left the form load. And I compare the time now to the time I was when I left the, the form load. And if it's greater than frame time, it's time to move to the baby to a new position. Now, if the baby doesn't have to move to a new position, we basically draw the background, and the order is important, draw the background first, then this goes on top, which is the score, this goes on top, this is the time. This draws the baby at those exact positions, this draws the target at those positions, and this draws the flame. And I know what you're saying, sir, I didn't shoot the flame. So yeah, but it draws it anyway. It's off screen to the left-hand side. If by chance you do hit the baby, now where'd this come from? Way down here when you did one of your timers, here it is right here, you checked to see if you hit the baby in one way or the other. If that's true, then it'll do this next part. Now that's kind of like the cool way to say if it equals true. You could have written it like that too. All right, either way is good, but that's kind of a different way to say you hit the true. If it hit it true, you draw the explosion sound, you play the sound, and then you initialize, which means it makes a new position for the baby. Also, we have to worry about running out of time. If we run out of time, we stop the game. Okay, so now here's our second game. This is a bit more sophisticated, obviously. It doesn't have all the components of the other one that I showed you, but it's a uh, a nice game. It's got a little bit of firing in it. It's got some background music that you might be hearing right now. And if I can hit this guy here, I'll show you it has some explosions. Okay. And of course, it's got a timer at the top, and you're keeping track of what the game is doing. Okay. So this would be another uh, example of what you could do. Now let's take a look at some of the code. Now this code I'm not going to go through in such depth as I did in the last one, but it gives you an idea how I created and the thought process for this particular game. So, at the very top, obviously, you added the two things for, for uh, buffering and for the sound. 
these are all the images I'm going to use in my game. Okay, so when you plan out your game, you're going to have to collect all your images, put them in the bin folder, and then get them all organized. Now, the target this time is that little spacecraft that's moving, and the target has a position that it's going to be at, plus it's going to have a certain amount that it moves over to the X, like across, and how much down. I'm also firing bullets. The bullets are also going to have to have a position, but the, the, the bullets don't have an X position and a Y position change, because my bullets go straight up. So I don't need, like I in this one, two things to go over and across. The bullets just go up, so I only have a DY for that. The rest of the stuff's pretty basic. Okay, I'm going to slide down a little bit, show you the form load. At the beginning, I'm assuming I haven't fired a bullet and I haven't hit anybody, and the score is zero. Okay, this is the initial position for the target. It starts at the very top, a little bit over and a little bit down, so it'll always appear from a certain spot. Now. If you want to make your game more challenging, you could make these random numbers so it's always from a different spot. This is the position of the bullet, and again, it's the trick I used before. The bullet is off screen. Sometimes you can put it negative 100 and 100. This one I put it way off screen to the right. This loads in the image array, stores the first image into the ship. This positions the ship somewhere uh, on the side of the screen near the bottom. Here's your sound effects and your, and your different uh, explosion sounds. If you're wondering about the background music that's constantly playing throughout the game, I did that in New Game, which is near the beginning when you start the game. And uh, if you use the media player, that's kind of different than using those uh, sound effects, right? So this will play throughout the entire um, game as a little background. Do you need that in your game? It's up to you. Whatever you think makes it look nice, all right? And when I stop the game, this is how you stop uh, the music player from playing. Okay, got the timers down at the bottom, you've seen that before, there's the key down event, you've seen that before, pretty basic. This one here is a little bit different in how I set this up, okay? So when I'm moving my object along the bottom, which is that spacecraft that's going to be shooting stuff, the instant I press the 8 key to shoot a bullet or whatever, I position my X a little bit over, because it's always hugging the top left corner. So I position it over 35 over, which to me was about the middle of my spacecraft and I position the bullet a little bit up from there so it comes out of the top of the spacecraft and of course the bullets going up not down and up in graphics is negative so when you're starting from the bottom and you're shooting the bullet up it's going to go in a negative direction now you're going where do you use that right here timer tick every time the timer ticks I move the position of the Y bullet up now 99 percent of the time I'm not firing so this dy is going to be zero, so I'm going to be moving nothing. So I'm staying still. Once in a while, when I put my finger down on the key, it goes up by negative 20. These things, same thing. They're going to be constantly moving, and because they move a little bit over to the x and a little bit over to the y, it almost goes like a zigzag pattern. Okay. Now, when you're moving that stuff around, you got to watch. Like, where's the bullet? If I fire the bullet and it goes off the screen, i got to reset it back to nothing. It could... What about the targets? The targets are bouncing off the wall like crazy. i got to worry about that. That's what that part does. It checks if you hit the left side or the right side or the up or the down part. And each time I make the target bounce the other way. Of course, I might hit something, right? This is how you check the collision for the bullet. And I showed you in the last example, and this is really important. Otherwise, you're going to give yourself 10,000 points every time you hit something. you got to make sure you hit it and then make sure the hit flag was false, which means it hadn't been hit ever before. Then you set it to true, so that if it gets back in here really fast, you don't give yourself an extra 100 points. Okay? And let's go back up to the last part. Okay, here's the last part. Draw stuff. Remember, draw stuff, you draw a lot of things, even if you don't use them. You draw every single thing. So we initialize all our fonts and stuff, because we're going to print out some words. We always draw the background. We're going to draw the words. We're going to draw the ship. We're going to draw the T-board that's always moving. This thing might not be moving, but you draw the bullet. I know it, it sounds weird, but you always draw it even though you're not going to use it. Once in a while, you're going to hit something, right? If you do, you draw the explosion sound, and you make a sound effect. If the countdown is less than or equal to zero, that means the game's over, and you stop the game. Okay, so that's a typical example of a game from beginning to end, and sorry if you heard the background, but I'm recording this right now in my uh, last period class, but hopefully you picked up as much as uh, hopefully you could.